Question number two, Sue Kedgley. Sue Kedgley. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. A question for the Minister of Agriculture. How does he expect he would benefit from any resumption of the trade in live sheep exports in Saudi Arabia? The Honourable David Carter. Mr Speaker, New Zealand would benefit economically from the resumption of trade. I do not want to speculate on any specific figure, but I can tell the House that the live animal export trade last year was worth a billion dollars to the Australian economy. It is clear that in these challenging times, this is a potential, potential economic opportunity for our farmers. Sue Kedgley. Supplementary. Isn't it the case that at the moment there is one Saudi exporter seeking, uh, seeking a resumption of the trade? And why would the government risk ruining New Zealand's reputation as a responsible agricultural exporter just so that a Saudi-owned company can send sheep on a traumatic three-week sea journey only to be slaughtered at the end of their nightmare voyage? The Hon. David Carter. The negotiations of continuing trade with South, uh, Saudi Arabia began approximately four years ago under the previous Labor government. There is no timetable set for the completion of those negotiations. The fact is the, the export of livestock so, uh, for slaughter will not happen unless this government is totally satisfied that the highest animal welfare and safety standards are met. Colin King. Supplementary to the Minister of Agriculture. What is the government's primary focus in relation to the issue of live animal exports? Order, order. I, I couldn't hear the question. It wasn't the interjections, actually. I don't think the microphone was turned up. If, you, if the honourable member wouldn't mind repeating the question for us. Thank, thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister. What is the government's primary focus in relation to the issue of live animal exports? The Honourable David Carter. Mr Speaker, very simply, animal welfare. We inherited these negotiations from the previous government, and I have made it clear to officials that my overriding concern in even considering this issue is ensuring the most stringent standards of animal welfare and safety are met both during transportation and upon arrival. Unless these standards can be absolutely guaranteed, I have no appetite whatsoever for resuming these exports. Sue Kedgley. How can he possibly guarantee that stringent animal welfare standards will be maintained on a three-week-long sea journey where up to 70,000 sheep are jammed into pens have to endure overcrowded conditions, heat stress, seasickness, exhaustion, disease, with many dying en route, or for that matter on arrival in Saudi Arabia, given that country's lack of animal welfare laws. The Honourable David Carter. That covers the very point I am making. The government is demanding extraordinarily high standards of animal welfare and safety before we reconsider the resumption of live exports. And I would be the first to acknowledge that it may be difficult for some countries to meet these conditions. But let me make it very clear we are not prepared to compromise, and this may mean this trade never resumes. Colin King. Uh, supplementary to the Minister of Agriculture. Has any timetable been set for the resumption of live sheep exports? The Honourable David Carter. Mr Speaker, no. Despite the scaremongering and hysteria of the Greens, absolutely no timetable has been set. The Greens should be ashamed to suggest otherwise. These negotiations are continuing after four years, and there is no set timetable for the completion of those negotiations. Sue Kedgley. Why, when we have long-standing certified halal slaughterhouses in New Zealand, would we even consider sending sheep to be slaughtered at the other side of the world? And wouldn't resumption of the trade inevitably cost jobs and lead to abattoir closures, as has happened in Australia? The Honourable David Carter. 
Mr. Speaker, there clearly is a potential of economic benefit to the New Zealand sheep farmer if the conditions which I've spoken of today can be satisfied. Quest, uh, Sue Kedge, point of order, Sue Kedge. Point of order, I seek leave to table two documents. One is uh, the company records of the Asa Awasi New Zealand Limited Company, showing it as a wholly owned Saudi company. Leave is sought to table that document. Is there any objection? There the is no objection. The second one uh, dated Saturday 28-3-2009, the weekend press, a cartoon saying, we sacrifice these animals Order. to the one Order. we worship, Order. the almighty is that dollar. a cartoon from a newspaper? It is, yes. It is. Leave is sought to table a cartoon from a newspaper. Is there any objection?